welcome to episode 17 of the Dirty Side of the Grid podcast, where we've turned up late to qualifying, but since it's called, our episode is called uh, Drive to Survive, we're moving up to the front of the grid. <laughs> Yusuf <laughs> and this is my co-host, Mohammed. Uh, and today we're going to be reviewing the Drive to Survive uh, series. Yeah, yeah, this is probably yeah. the first time you've done the intro in one attempt. Exactly. Which is very impressive. Yes! As you can <clears> tell, <throat> clearly Netflix is rubbing off on him. So. Yeah. I did, I did, that, the reason I actually came up with that is I did actually call our show once, Drive to Survive Accident. Oh yeah, so, that's one of the, t- if you haven't exactly. seen it, you've got to watch that, that was a great intro. That yeah, was it good. Was, it, came <laughs> out, it came out very wrong. Well. Yeah. Anyways, anyways. Maybe next year you will be uh, doing the little interviews in that black room. <laughs> I've actually, I've got such a funny meme about that, that I saw on Twitter like literally just half an hour ago. Mm. But anyway, yeah. We're reviewing season four. We binge watched it over this weekend, even though we're both incredibly busy. We somehow managed to yeah. fit it in. And we're going to share our opinions on it. Overall thoughts. Let's start with overall thoughts. Not, not a specific episode. We can do kind of a rundown of the episodes. But kind of overall thoughts compared to last season and kind of compared to what you expected. Okay, well... How was it? In general, okay, we'll start off quickly by saying, like, we're both long time f1 fans we've been watching it for a very long time we you know like most people we we watch the stuff we know about this we watch drive to survive mainly for their like extra access they get so like the little dinners the little comments they have in between stuff like those special interviews that only they get access to but i just feel like they've completely missed the point this season like, There's a lot of like footage of the cars driving and stuff, but that's not what you're watching. Here's it? the thing, like it's just so I'm I watch TV shows half asleep. Like it doesn't matter how good mm-hmm. the TV show is, I won't remember what happened and I won't like analyze it to the level that pretty much the average person will. I'm just half asleep anyway. It doesn't matter how good it is. With this one, like even I noticed, like I feel like they've missed their audience. Drive to Survive from season one was trying to get new fans into the sport. Yeah, cool. Which means that they have to give context to what's happening. Yeah, pretty so, much everything that's yeah, happening. Yeah, so what you're saying is like, oh, here's Ocon and Yuki, for example. We'll get onto them later in the episode. But like, here's Ocon and Yuki. Here's who they are. Here's where they came from. Here's why they have a rivalry. And here's what happened in the rivalry. Exactly. That's cool. But the problem is we're four seasons in now. And most of these Drive to Survive fans... It worked so well. They love the sport so much. These guys watch testing. Like, I hate testing. I've never watched testing in my life. I've been watching F1 since, like, 2009. No one watches testing. I don't watch testing. Like, these guys, they watch testing. They're following the drivers. They're everywhere. They're buying the merch. They're getting tickets. I still, like, it costs the price of a family holiday to go to an F1 race. And most of these people have been to an F1 race before I have. Obviously, there's financial situations involved. But, like, these, they really care. Yeah. So to spend half the season just giving context, Will Buxton saying very obvious things, and then like, let's just constantly let's not even like, bring him up. It's just it's it's just rep- repetition. Like mm-hmm. last year, oh well, yeah, we like him to Steiner. He swears a lot. Ha, he's funny. Hass are really poor. They just need to get through this season. Maybe they'll do better next year. What have we done this time? We've spent like fifty percent of an episode going. Hass are really poor. 50%. They're struggling. A full or the episode. Inter- yeah, a full, a full episode. episode. And then the same thing with Williams. Like, we'll, we'll get onto like an episode by episode breakdown later. But, like, there's another episode about, oh, Williams are really poor. They're struggling for money. But, Wouldn't it but, be great if they scored points? Like, it's. But it's the just Williams boring. one, I actually, like, the William, uh, Williams one, I actually think is one of the best episodes because it, it had kind of an arc of the struggle of Williams, what they've been going through and stuff. Till they scored points, so that kind of arc was interesting. Uh, yeah, you always had to end that arc once they so, scored the points. Yeah, yeah, but that that was very interesting. But in terms of overall, what I thought I thought it was very repetitive, yeah, very yeah. generally boring overall. And I thought that they could have done so much. Like even the Hass episode, I think was interesting because there was so much behind the scene footage. Whereas, there was a couple moments in that. Yeah, episode, yeah, but but like say like the like the last two episodes like generally speaking like the mercedes red bull stuff it's just the stuff you watched on track yeah like yeah if i wanted a season review i'll just go watch you know like that uh, like five minute episode that talks about what happened in the race yeah exactly like if i when, wanted when to know I, what happened in the I race watching, i would have watched the race exactly. which the thing is most of the people watching drive to survive now have seen the race exactly why am i watching a one hour episode where you just 
you're not adding anything like a lot of the stuff like say the yuki stuff you're talking about that was interesting because they they showed kind of what he's been doing why he was struggling yeah, how he got better yeah, yeah. they showed a lot of behind the scenes footage and moving then, from no to yeah, stuff italy and stuff that was interesting yeah right? But, like, with Ocon, I never got why they're talking about Ocon. They're like, he's a junior driver. <laughs> well, he's been in F1 for, like, four years. How yeah, is he like a junior was, driver? In what it was world? a weird comparison to make. And they didn't highlight enough the time he spent outside. Exactly. Because, obviously, he's one that, in 2018, he would have been in the first series. Exactly. And then it was mentioned that he left out, like, he missed a year, and then came back again. So, like, literally just even within the drive to survive universe he's a character that's been followed yeah so like when to not highlight him is just, yeah exactly like just starting again from zero with Ocon everything like that's exact that's just the perfect point it sums it up everything's introduced as if it's new again like oh I, you see F1 ties you need to pit so you can go faster like don't like, I, I get giving an introduction to F1 strategy so people understand what the t- pit stops actually mean but you did that in season one most of these people have been watching F1 now for like three years. I guess I guess they're thinking, you know, if one guy watches season four, doesn't watch season one, maybe he needs context. But the no, level, but the level, you know, like he was like, I remember the one thing that stood out was Will Buxton ex- trying to explain what double a double waved yellow flags is. <laughs> just like, yeah, bro. Ah, uh, it's it's just not, like the the problem is like even then like I've a mate I know like a literally last week just started watching F1 and they've started on season one. Exactly. Like, that like F1 you're not starts from season, season one and then carries on. So realistically, even if you don't watch a single F1 race between season one and season four, the context is given. Mm, and if you really want more information and if you really want more context, just go watch a five minute YouTube video. Like there's loads of videos explained. Even we've done like, we have like, we don't have a huge online presence, but we've explained F1. So... Mm. Like, there's videos out there. So, for Netflix to use their 10 hours of content that they get, like, exclusive access to all the teams and then use it having Will Buxton explain what qualifying is, it's it's such a waste. Uh. Like, it's such... Like, we're not trying to be, like... It's very easy to just hate on Drive to Survive and stuff, but we, we understand it's had a big impact on the sport. It's just we don't... I don't know. We didn't organise this. We weren't, yeah. like... I didn't know I your also, opinion walking into this, but it's just it, yeah. We specifically it's we specifically didn't speak about it just so we kind of yeah, aired yeah. our opinions now. You know, it's kind of like very raw, essentially. But I think like okay, let's go. Like, do you want to go episode by episode? Or I'd say the last thing I'd say is yeah. Some of the episodes, like the McLaren one, and like someone messaged me, like one of my friends messaged me, like, why are they making out Ricardo and Lando to be like like they hate each other, and it's like. Like, Ricardo and Lando aren't the greatest of friends, but the relationship is quite good compared to, like, other drivers where it's been, like... The way they make it out, you think, you know, it's, like... I don't know, Nico and, like... If Ni- oh, yeah. Like, I'm trying to imagine if they had access to Nico and Lewis, what would oh, happen? that would have been so cool. Like, bro, they would... They, like, they would have completely... Then, the t- yeah. Exactly, they would have ruined it, but, like, as in... <laughs> That that is kind of the context of what they're doing, but with Lando as well. Last I think it was last year they tried to make him out as if he was like fighting with Carlos as well. It's like yeah, yeah. I don't get like this, like. It might be cool for people watching. Like they're creating drama where there is no drama, which is in a season like this season, you really don't need to do that. Yeah, it it was a bit unneeded. And I feel like they also missed out on like very big points. Like, some of them were very... Like, they spoke about Spa and stuff, which was good. Yeah. But they also missed out on the fact that there was no race. And they missed out on, like, the podium. Like, like George got his first podium. And they and they mentioned they mentioned George in... Uh, was it Sakir last year? Yeah, yeah, they finally this gave year, that. Yeah. Bro, last year, how did you not mention the guy drove, like, an incredible race? Like, the behind-the-scenes of kind of the relationship between George and Valtteri, that was interesting. Yeah, that was Why are you cool bringing on, on, uh, on track stuff, like, just, just cover the behind-the-scenes? I want to know why they hate each other. I want to see them hating each other. I don't want to see them <laughs> on track. There's, he's at the end and he's at the front. Obviously, there's going to be nothing except that one incident in Imola. Yeah, that, that's such a good point. Because after they put, like, we'll get into the episode in a minute, but, like, once they've mentioned Imola, you can't say, oh, this Georgian... 
Valtteri rivalry is going to be massive on track. And then it's no. like Valtteri starting third and then George in 12th. And then nothing happens because obviously they're not going to be on track next to each other. So what's the point? And then even then, Sakir was so emotional for so many people to watch him like get in the car, overtake Bottas into turn one, overtake him again after the pit stops, all of that stuff, the puncture, so emotional, him crying afterwards. And then it was given like a five minute montage, like not even five minutes. Or the the thirty seconds, whatever it was. Like it was literally just mental. It's such a miss, but we'll. I think, like, they did cover the whole, like, Mercedes kind of driver, like, what's happening there and stuff like that. That was, in like, when they covered it with Valtteri. So that was interesting. But I think yeah. overall, like, if we kind of summarize overall, I think, I think they showed too much on-track stuff that you can just access on YouTube. Yeah. They did not show enough kind of behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, I did not like the kind of storylines that were covering. Like, I think it could have been way better. Like, if they covered different because there were so many other storylines to cover and i think some of the episodes were just subpar like the last few episodes weren't good the mclaren episodes were boring the episode covering danny ricardo was very boring because it did not add anything new to a driver who everyone knows like if you've watched one season of drive to survive you guaranteed you know yeah Daniel he's Ricardo. a big you know him very well as well yeah so i don't get why they're covering his struggle because like you could have literally done that in the McLaren episode. You didn't need a, an episode to cover it like him. Like, it's boring. Man. There were also, on top of that, there were some characters that, just quickly before the episode by episode breakdown, were just got some of the stuff missing. Like, big events last year. There was Spa, like you said, which wasn't a race. Old Dobby will get into how that Baku. was portrayed. Baku as well. There's like... A lot of the drivers as well. They didn't speak about missing. Sergio winning again. Like, yeah, his Paris first win for winning. Red Bull. Got uh, it. So, Kimi, nowhere. Giovinazzi, I mean, that, understandable he's not mentioned, but he's not there. Perez, there was very little on. Uh, the rookies were given some time, to be fair. Stroll didn't see his face once. Vettel did not see him. Vettel, like, yeah, I just saw his face, like, a couple times. Leclerc as well, he did The Ferrari see. drivers would have been so nice to see a little yeah, bit Yeah, you more. didn't see, like... Like, that was a good episode to cover, like, their relationship and how it's actually kind of growing together and stuff. Yeah. There was, like, a little bit of them driving around Monaco together, which was quite nice. And I could tell... Yeah, I liked already, their relationship. I already saw that video. That video is literally, like, available, was it, on YouTube or something? I literally yeah, yeah. saw that footage <laughs> before. It's not new footage. Uh, that yeah, there was a lot missing there. Ocon was obviously shown. Alonso was shown for like five seconds. Or like I would have been that. way more interested, uh, interested in seeing Alonso come back and why he came back, and that type of thing. Rather true, than very true. Rather than see like them talk about like Ocon, no one cares. Like sorry, like with all due respect, <laughs> but no one cares about Ocon. It would have been better to give more context because Ocon's already been covered, I guess, as we mentioned. Yeah, so and the way they covered him was like he's a new junior. Dri- he's not. He's actually been driving. In that form for so long, and I feel like they didn't give like his win at Hungary, did not kind of, they didn't give it justice. Like, they didn't cover it as much as I thought they would cover it. True. Yeah. The, like, you could. I feel like the format's a bit rinsed. Like last week, the last thing they were mentioned, Gasly. There were just a couple clips of him. Would have been nice to see him a bit more. Especially since like he's Gasly. actually done really really well this year as well. Yeah. Definitely. Like he's so consistent. He's so, so likable as well. The only thing, the only thing they mentioned is him where. Um, his agent's like, oh, there's a C at Mercedes, and he's like, oh, maybe I should start <laughs> learning German. That's what I mean. That's the only that thing I mentioned. Good. Like, oh. like, I don't get, like, why are we seeing Ocon speak with his family and not seeing, like, I don't care what his family is saying. Like, <laughs> what the hell, man? Uh, you want to get the episode? Right, yeah, let's, right, let's go episode by episode, and then we'll yeah, see what we can get out episodes. of this. I do, and I've got the title. So, okay. we'll start off, right, so episode one, Clash of the Titans. As always with Drive to Survive, episode one is just hyping up the season. And then they have, what, the first half an hour just building context. Oh, this team is so bad. They're struggling. Oh, these are the underdogs. And then you have them trying to win in the second half, which is, it's just rinse and repeat. Like, literally every single episode follows this format. The first half an hour is this team is bad. The second half an hour is, all right, let's see if they win or lose. So, Clash of the Titans is basically just Red Bull versus Mercedes in Bahrain. We see... Uh, Red Bull and Horner and his unhealthy obsession with Mercedes, Toto yeah. and winning. Horner just constantly, like in front of his kids, I'm pretty sure this is the episode where he like uh, he has a little conversation with his kids. It's like, what do you wish for? And like, you know, she says like, well, a guinea pig or something. 
and he goes, don't you want Max to win the World Championship? <laughs> like, like, I know he's doing that to be funny in front of the cameras. There's no way they actually do that a lot. Yeah. Like, But That's it comes so off a little bit, like, I think, I think, like, overall, like, Christian Horner in Drive to Survive is just annoying. Like, <laughs> yeah, he, he gets a lot of screen time. Like, no, a lot, like, like Toto always. gets a lot of screen time as well. He does this season, but, but like... Across the whole thing, Horner. Christian Horner, Horner just like he spoke so much about, and it's all about me. See, and I get, like, <laughs> it's just I don't know, like, you know, like when after like the whole incident, uh, in Italy, you see like Toto's like, I don't want to hear what they're saying on uh, on social media and stuff yeah. and, like all of that, and then like the opposite was like Christian Horner like banging on social media <laughs> for so long. Man, uh, it just annoys me. Like he it, it, it irritates Red Bull in general. Sometimes like just like they're a good team and everything, and you like them, but sometimes they're just like irritating. Yeah, man. I'm like I I tried my best. Obviously, like I said at the start, like because we've been watching F one and stuff, we've seen loads of interviews of these people. We've seen the way they've grown, the way they've changed teams, and what's happened to them, and like the context behind their story. So it's very hard to look at Drive to Survive with a fresh pair of eyes and then say, all right, this is how this person's portrayed. They're meant to be made out as a good or bad person or whatever it is. With Horner, I was trying so hard to be like, if this was my first time seeing Horner, what would I think? But it just, like, in the back of my mind, I still had his, like, unhealthy obsession with Mercedes, and it just reinstated that fact, like... Like, even just, his wife gets, like, so... Like, surprisingly, his wife... His like, wife, Toto's wife gets a lot of... They get a lot of, like... They got more of, interviews than, like... 50% of the grid, like, exactly. they were talking a lot. But I guess it does It does give a bit of context, because the big fight this year was between Max and Lewis and also between Toto and Christian. Yeah. And I think what they highlighted this year that I actually liked was the the amount of work and the amount of time and the level of de- dedication that it required for you to lead one of these teams. Yeah, that and was you saw, like. Yeah. Their whole life revolves like around F one. You know, like he's riding a horse in the middle of the road <laughs> with his wife. He's just talking about. I hope Max wins the championship. <laughs> like, that's not what you're supposed to be talking about. <laughs> is it? Like, <laughs> he was like, "Your horse is like Bottas or something." He goes, "I'm not riding Bottas." <laughs> like, like it's just like it's such a weird. I feel sorry for them. You know, the wives must be so. Bored no, no, but what's his name? What's her name? Uh, Toto's wife. She actually, she's a team Susie principal. Wolf. She's a team. Yeah, principal. of course. So she's obsessed with F one on racing anyway. So F- it's, yeah, it's, it's fair funny. enough. But like, <laughs> to have a spice it's girl. Too much, man. It's too much. Every man. day going on about Max Verstappen. Uh, <laughs> you feel sorry for them to be honest. They definitely. Yeah, the like, first episode for me is just boring. Like I skipped. Yeah, way it's too much for that. <laughs> I watched the full thing on one point five times speed, and yeah, it's just. It was, like I said, so it's the build-up, first half an hour, oh, you know, let's win, we've got to win this, Mercedes have had it too easy. That's another thing, I saw a tweet about this, like, the constant hatred of Mercedes, like, obviously I'm a Lewis Hamilton fan, but, like, the constant hatred of Mercedes going up to people saying, oh, you know, hold them up, hold them up, make sure you win, blah, 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 all of this. I get it, and I get I get that, but, like, it's your own fault, bro, like, like make a faster car. Like, you can hate them as much as you want, but then going up to the cameras and going, oh, they've had it too easy, they haven't had a challenge. It's not their fault. Like, just make a faster car. There's another nine teams on the grid. Like, just do better, like. But Christian Horner always does this thing where every episode he's like, oh, Mercedes have had it for too long, we have to win this. this. And he doesn't win at the end, but... Like, that's why I'm saying it's repetitive. Eight, eight back-to-back championships. He hasn't won, so he must be oh. saying to himself, "This year's gonna be different." This year. That's what I mean. Yeah, every year get, you get the interview. Again. <laughs> <laughs> like it must hurt, oh, you know. Like bro. he's lost so many times. Like, yeah, well, first episode for me. Was that's just, episode one. Yeah, it was boring. Like for me, overall, episode one was just not worth the time of watching. Uh, it's it's the same as. It all didn't add like, I think if they had like a lot of behind the scenes like footage of. Nah, that would have saved it, to be honest. Honestly, no, anything. Like, the, as you can tell, the, the recurring theme that we're going to get onto, like, not even knowing his opinions on each of the episodes, very easily you can tell the ones with the more behind-the-scenes footage, things that we haven't seen before, and things that go into depth about these storylines, that's what makes yeah. a better episode. Not, like, scratching the surface and saying, oh, okay, you know, this person won. Like, that's, like, anyone knows that already. I would have been interested to see like stuff behind the scenes, say Lewis preparing for the season, uh, with Red Bull as well, like 
with them doing better at testing and like seeing a lot of behind the scenes footage of that yeah. seeing, seeing a lot of behind the scenes footage of post Baku what he's doing post Italy post Silverstone what Max obviously Max wasn't in it so you can't yeah, say about that about but like that. stuff like that where a big incident happened and get them to speak about it that yeah. would have been way more interesting <laughs> Because you're seeing kind of, they're offering you insight into something that we never, we don't have insight into. That would have been way more interesting than just, they're basically, this is my issue, is they're rehashing what we've already watched. With yeah. like, yeah. You, you, with like dramatic music and you say, <laughs> I had to win or I'm going to lose my contract. Oh my God. <laughs> it's boring. The like, music was more annoying this year. Exactly. It's, like it was so, so much more annoying. I don't get that. Like, it's just like, you know those dramatic <laughs> YouTube videos? It's like, it's produced by a just what it is, just what it is. You know those, like, uh, those football YouTube channels where it's like a uh, top 10 crazy things that happened in the last 10 minutes of a match? <laughs> you got, like, Ronaldo about to take a free kick and a plane crashes in the stadium in the thumbnail. <laughs> like, that's Drive to Survivor just sums it's it up. It's too much fun. But yeah, no, we'll get on to... Okay, I don't think it's the worst episode. I think they're worst episodes. <laughs> well, speaking of the yeah, interesting episodes, <laughs> episode two, Ace in the Hole, is uh, Daniel Ricciardo and it's Monaco. Now, if you don't remember Monaco, uh, Daniel's hyped up in the first half an hour as we follow the exact same format. Yeah, they're talking about how incredible great he was driver. He was so good in Red Bull. He's won seven uh, races. He's meant to be world championship material. He goes to Monaco. Where he won his last race. Where before that he um, he out qualifies Lando, but Lando win like uh, wins ahead of him, and they make a big deal about oh beating your oh, teammate. And yeah, he, he lost by four thousandths of a second or six milliseconds or whatever it was, and he's like, oh, this is horrible. He's lost to his teammate. Like they're next to each other, bro. Like it's it's qualifying. No, that was that was that was Monza. That was later on. No, so oh, they that start. Oh, wait, they no, start yeah, from Bahrain. Was, yeah. Where he out-qualifies Lando and Lando's upset and he's like, yeah, I out-qualified my teammate, yeah. And then his teammate just gets like, I think it's like fourth and he's like nowhere to be seen. <laughs> and, then, and then he's like, oh, it's a dark day. <laughs> like, what the hell, man? Like, it's just boring. And then Lando after the race is like, yes, I be my teammate. Mm. Like, it's so forced, man. It's so forced. Like, I get the teammate battle's a big thing. Yeah, but, like, the, like with, uh, with McLaren, they're just trying to make... Like, it would have been easier with, a, like, to to make, like, say, like, something like Haas. Like, they hate each other because they actually hate each yeah. other. But McLaren, they don't hate each other. So why are you trying it's to hard, do It's hard, yeah, because it's annoying because, like, um, the, the teammate battle being, thing is big, but they played the, the, oh, we need both drivers in this card so many times. Like, they did it with Red Bull oh, we need both drivers in this. It's so important to have both drivers doing well. And they did it again this time. Like, oh, both drivers doing well is so important. <laughs> <laughs> and you cut to Daniel finishing like 16th in four races. <laughs> ah, uh, bro, he's dead. But anyway. If, I, if he had scored better, like overall in the season, if he had scored better, McLaren would have easily... Of course, yeah, definitely. If he hadn't gotten but, so many P16s and 15s. <sighs> Yeah, my yeah. friend who likes Daniel as well. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure he'll be even more happy to know that in Monaco, just to remind him once again, he got lapped by Lando, Lando, which was horrendous. And to be fair, I did like the section where they... I mean, it was a little bit annoying, but when they highlighted the thing about... um, Getting lapped. Like, the, the lapped, the sympathy comment as well. Like, Lando saying that he doesn't have sympathy for Daniel, like, struggling with the car and stuff. Uh, yeah, and it was blown a bit basically out of, like, yeah. he shouldn't have said this. Like, I'll stay quiet. It was blown a bit out of proportion, but it's good because I feel like they could have had a bit of a better contrast. They mentioned it slightly, but not really. Him and Lando and Carlos got on really well. And Daniel's obviously this great character. We've all seen him in Drive to Survive and in general. So everyone expected him and Daniel to get on really well. And it was like, like at some points the like their relationship was like pretty awkward. Like that yeah, little back obviously and forth there's a big there's a big age difference and there there's a big age difference. There's a big like, performance difference. Like in yeah, they're yeah. interested in very different things as well. So like, they could have like, I don't know, the fan hype around their relationship and then it not being what everyone expected is definitely something they could have worked on because over in Ferrari, those two get on really well and I feel like the. The teammate relationship is definitely a card they're going to play, but they didn't play it incredibly well. 
Yeah, yeah Lando was... getting a new contract and them not wanting to say how many years it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Carlos being like, yeah, the, the, the funny part is like where Leclerc is like, yeah, you're friends yeah. with him. Ask yeah. him yeah. <laughs> that, that was, was that cool. was a funny thing. That's why, that's what we want to see. Exactly. Just like, like them chatting about each other and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I think episode two was probably, I think it was probably the worst one. Oh, oh really? Yeah. It was just, it was so boring and <laughs> like, there was nothing new to add. Like, we already knew all of this. Like, we already knew, like, Lando and uh, and Daniel weren't the best of friends. And we already knew why that was. And, like, if you've watched, essentially, I think Lando commented on it before. And, like, there is footage where they film stuff from McLaren, you know, for the YouTube. Yeah. And, stuff. and you can see they're not, like, like it's not like Carlos. Obviously, there is not going to be the same. The guy's 31 and the other guy's, like, 21. Like, there is yeah. a huge age difference. And, obviously, their interests are so different compared to... Carlos and Nando had very, very similar interests. Yeah, they all play golf together. and They probably still, I'm pretty sure they still do that, like, on golf yeah. and all of that stuff. So, yeah, it's a bit of a miss this episode, but we'll get on to three where we're back to Red Bull and Mercedes. And this one is called Tipping Point, and it covers Silverstone mainly. So, here's probably the first big episode where you feel Max Verstappen's, like, the empty hole he leaves behind because... He said before uh, the season started that he wasn't going to do interviews for Drive to Survive, mainly because of the manufactured drama and all of this stuff. So we have Lewis speaking a little bit. We have Toto speaking a fair amount. Christian Horner, obviously becoming, <laughs> Horner becoming the main character, as he always is. And then Verstappen, we just get like little snippets of his radio and stuff. So anyway, we go on. I've I've put in my comments like Hall is unhealthy obsession continues I'm sure there were like so I can't even remember the shots but there were so many points where he's just talking about Mercedes and constantly going on he goes up to other teams he's like oh, hold him up or whatever it is and all of this stuff and yeah they just talk about it all just be, builds up to the incident so it's like a you know Red Bull had a great streak of wins they're doing really well it's almost made out to be if like if Mercedes lose this race now they lose this the is it. They've lost the championship, yeah. Silverstone being like, what, round 10 of 23 or whatever it is. And if they lose this race, the championship might as well be over. So, like, stakes are high and they build it up. Like I said, in the first half an hour, they're going on about it. And then they build up to the crash. And then, like you said before, like, it's, there's no aftermath. It's just a Exactly. Bit like, I think, like, there they could have been, like, so much to say about... Even Christian Horner didn't really speak much about what happened. Yeah. Like, they only got his, his him speaking to Michael Massey. Like, oh, this is... Complaining about the yeah. penalty, yeah. But they didn't actually, like, if they removed the first half, got the incident, like, after, like, say, 10 minutes of, like... A little the, bit of yeah. context, yeah. Yeah, and then, like, Christian Horner speaking about it. That would have been way more interesting, because then you get to see, like, both sides of the coin, get Toto and Lewis to speak, get Christian to speak. It would add, like... Or, like, footage from kind of the Red Bull garage or something like that. So you get... Yeah, there's even kind of the mechanics just talking about it. Not, like not just the mechanics. Scenes. Like, behind the scenes after the race, like, if Max doesn't want to be there, just, like, what's happening, what's happening with Red Bull and stuff, like him yeah. and Marco. Something, you know, like, that would have been... It's just disappointing. There was so much they could have done, and then they just, like, they end with Christian speaking to Michael Massey, which we've all heard before like yeah they ha it's not like they didn't have a lot of conversations like they're always trying to each other so like exactly so i don't i don't get new. i don't well one thing like i think this made out is michael messi you know when he spoke i think this is a later episode but he spoke he's like oh i'm a friend I'm the oh friend yeah it wasn't a later this. one yeah. when he was like i'm the friend i was like no you're not you're not <laughs> supposed to be a friend are you like what do you mean you're a friend you're the referee you're not supposed to be friends with anyone oh, like oh. Like you can see, you can see though, like he's, he's influenced by, like the everyone, bro. Yeah. The guys like, but also like the people he's close to. Like I, I remember Lewis commented on, like the stewards basically being flying with people and stuff. Like he, he's yeah. good friends with what's his name, Jos Verstappen. Like he, he uh, Massey, was it Massey? I think. I don't know about. I think he drove him to the ep uh, to the airport or so maybe it's oh, someone else. I think it I'm wasn't. Right. It wasn't him. Someone no, no, no. It was Ross Braun. It was Ross Braun. Oh, but. He's close to a few people, so obviously he's going to be a bit biased in the way he 
judges everything. He's not supposed to be friends with the drivers or the team. It's yeah, it's like sure you can be like you can have a professional relationship, but like friends is a it's a bit far. Yeah. I don't know. Either way, so we go into that. Obviously, stakes are high. Blah blah blah. They weirdly the way they put it is like you've got to do anything to win, which is like sure, fine, whatever. It's F one, sure. But then obviously the crash happens. They make it seem like it's on purpose. And then Horner adds like a couple little hints where he's like, you know, well, Lewis, yeah, he's a nice guy, but like he's got a ruthless side to him. You don't win some more championships without, without being ruthless. And like, sure, yeah. But like Lewis said it himself, like he has a clean track record. Like, so I don't know. It's just weird to add the little comments in there to sprinkle in the little doubts about, you know, maybe he crashed out of Mexico stuff. And on but that's the thing. They always have like a, a villain kind of. And this yeah. year is kind of like, I think, they didn't, uh, didn't do it as obviously as with Max, say, in season one. Like, Max in season one was just battered by... Uh, yeah. But I think Lewis was kind of at the end of it, kind of. You know what they're talking about. He's the end of it most of the time. With the Red Bull Mercedes thing, I think Mercedes in general were kind of... Red Bull were the victims, almost. And they were kind of... You know, they're the yeah. good guys, and Mercedes are the bad guys. Which I... I don't really get as much. Like, if you if you design a better car and you keep winning for eight years, obviously, like, people don't want to keep watching you win. Yeah, they want to support but, the dog. But at the same time, like, it's not my fault you can't design a better <laughs> car, is it? Yeah, they're stuck in a tough place because the thing is you get so much access to Horner and him in his day-to-day life. It's very easy to make him seem like the good guy because you can go, he's the underdog, he keeps losing, he's trying, but, you know, this Mercedes giant that's... So much bigger than Red Bull and has but so that's much the thing, more they money, even spend, though they don't. They spend the same amount. Like he's trying to be this Mercedes giant and all of this, and he comes in with this like soft British accent. And he comes in all of this because you got to remember, like, to these Americans, I'm sure, uh, Toto's Austrian accent probably screams movie villain. But then you come into a corner in his little accent in his like mansion in Oxfordshire and stuff, and he comes around chatting to his kids about Max Verstappen. They but try and make him seem like a good guy, but. That was one thing that made me uncomfortable is they're showing his house, like... Oh, yeah. Like, they that's that actually, lot, like, if, if, if you really want to, like, find it, it's not that hard to find it with Google Earth, you know? Probably not, no. Because there are quite a few landmarks. Like, I've not done this, but, but I'm saying, like... <laughs> we do not like, know Christian Horner's exactly. address, just to No, no, but I'm saying, like, you know, like, a lot of stalkers, just from, like, small, like, stuff, they yeah, actually yeah. figure out their address. Imagine you're showing them the front of the house. <laughs> Bro, like... Like, with, with Toto, they only show the inside. Yeah, they only show, like, a little bit. Toto's a lot it's more like reserved. The dinner, yeah, the dinner table. Yeah. But Christian Horner is just, like, he doesn't <laughs> care. Like, I was, like, are you not, like, scared? He's going to do a house tour next year, to be yeah. honest. Was it this episode that they showed, I think it's later on, um, George, while he was out with his girlfriend, and, like, people kept stopping him and stuff? No, I think this was later. Yeah. We'll, we'll go on to the George and Bottas. So, episode four, A Mountain to Climb. We have a bit of Gunter Steiner walking up a mountain and that's paralleled with Haas's performances in Spain and Russia. Now Spain I it just Spain was shown in testing and then shown again in like four different episodes and I just got bored of seeing Spain. Like every time I saw Barcelona like it just it annoyed me. They showed the but, camp now as well. Oh yeah why, every why time they show the same shot of the camp new for Barcelona. Yeah. Where am I seeing this like like right I, I also don't like it was inter- this episode was interesting in the way, uh, he, like Nikita's uh, father was threatening, you know, like that was yeah. So this is my highlight. That that story. was interesting. It's also interesting, like the way Mazepin. Like I don't get how you're not embarrassed that you're performing so badly, and then he goes to his father. He's like, I don't get how he's extracting this performance. <laughs> out of the car. He must have a different car. No, he's just a better driver. Right? That's not first So this is exactly what we want to see. So, like, Lewis before, like, we all know this. F1 is a billionaire boys club. You know, it's all of this. But, like, having the little, like, shadowed characters brought forward is quite interesting. So, like, Mazepin's dad is someone we've heard a lot about. And we know he has a lot of money. But, like, I've actually never seen his face before. I'm no, sure he was shown, like, a little bit. But this is the first time I've seen him, uh, heard him speak as well. So it's very interesting to hear him say, like, threaten, like, if you don't switch these cars around so we see that, you know, Mick doesn't have a better car than um, Nikita, I will just pull out the money, like, you, I will just kill off the team there and then. That was very interesting. And it's nice to see that stuff. And Helmut Marco is, like, another one where you just kind of exactly. want to see these I, I people. Would say, I would say, like, a lot of people speak about Gunter Steiner and how he should, have, he should leave and he's doing very badly at the team and all of this. But I think when you watch this episode, you realise why he's still there. Yeah. Because yeah. 
you realize that no one is going to be able to kind of balance all the kind of stakeholders that Hass has. And he's able to balance having like Mick with having Nikita, with having his dad breathing on his neck, with having Gene Hass breathing. And he's Gene able Hass to, as well brought in. That was yeah, good additions from last, last few seasons. To be able to kind of maintain all of that, I think it was impressive the way he... Like, that's why he's still there, because he's yeah. able to kind of still balance. This team is still going. Massey would have folded at this point. Like, Massey, Massey would, would not really Massey would have kicked out Mick and then given uh, yeah. Nikita both cars. Like, it, it was... Drive both of them at the same time. <laughs> Superman. So, but, it's, it's good to see, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it was interesting. I think the only disappointing thing is they didn't actually cover... Like, they covered Nikita's struggles. Yeah. But I think it would have been interesting if they covered his relationship with Mick because you kind of see that awkward part where Nikita complains in the in the room. It's like, oh, his car is quicker on the straight than my car. Yeah. And then what's his name pulls him and he's like, oh, you can't speak on the radio to people like this and this, this, this. So that was interesting. But I think if they covered a bit of like Mick Schumacher with, with what's his name, that would have been a bit more We just saw him doing the, the yeah. Aldi catalogue photo shoot and that was it. it. Like, yeah, it was... It's annoying because like Netflix have made an entire documentary film thing about Michael Schumacher. So to introduce Mick as like up until well, most people's greatest of all time F one driver. Here's the son and he I'm is now so in F one. Alright, here's the Russian guy he's driving next to. Like it's it's anno- it's just another missed opportunity. Like once again you don't need context. This is Mick Schumacher. You've done a film about everyone, him, everyone, everyone and everyone knows, like knows Michael Schumacher. Schumacher. And even if they don't know Michael Schumacher, they've got Netflix and they've seen the film. Like, I think there's so one, much potential, but it's, it's just, I don't know. I think missed. one thing that they they also made out that's kind of obvious is people were confused why Kevin and Grosjean left. Oh. And I think they highlight, they highlight in this episode why Nikita is there. And they also highlight why Gunther Steiner chose Mick Schumacher. Because he's talking about how in Germany, you know, like there's a lot of sponsorships and stuff yeah. like that. And so you understand his choices and i think this episode actually like for all like the hate we can direct towards nikita and his dad and stuff it was actually probably one of the best episodes in the sense that it actually added so much to the characters that we know that we did not know before like we've learned a lot about nikita mazepin about his family the way Hass is drawn i think especially Hass, like why they chose nikita mazepin and mick schumacher uh, what's the kind of behind the scenes? I wish there was more behind the scenes footage between Mick and Nikita Mazepin. Yeah. But other than that, I think the episode was actually really good. I'd say seeing as they pretty much need to make a Hass episode of this one, like as much as I, I'd rather see battles in the midfield covered or other diff- like other drivers, seeing as how much everyone loves Gunter Steiner and stuff, it sounds like they've just got to have a token Hass yeah. episode every year. So for what it was, it was all right. But one thing that really did annoy me getting on to like right at the end of this episode we're going on like you know Mazepin's awful streak of performances oh, blah blah so blah well. he's doing awful and then suddenly alright we're in Russia there's rain in the last like five laps Mazepin do you want to pit for Inters he's like no uh, no no he's like no, he Mazepin says, do you want to stay up he says pit me for Inters and they're like no no it's way too early all the other drivers saying no it's too early blah blah Mazepin pits he's got the intermediate tyres on the rain carries on he's like yeah well, back in the day when I was walking home from school, I'd see these clouds. They're Russian clouds. Do you know what that means? Rain. And then it rains, and he does incredibly well. You've got pics of him, like, overtaking cars, and you're like, oh, Mazepin, great job, mate. You beat Latifi and it's Schumacher. I'm laughing. So. <laughs> he finished last. Yeah, he finished just, ahead of those two bro, retired. They didn't, they didn't finish. Those two drivers retired, so he still finished last. Like... I understand, like, good call, but, like, they fully... Because, obviously, I've forgotten what happened in Russia. Everyone knows about, like, Lando and stuff in They Russia. didn't cover that. They didn't even mention that. That's, like, the Sakir of this season, where they didn't even cover Lando's Russia. Russia and I think that Korea, affected, you can see in the second part of the season, it affected Lando mentally. Like, he wasn't performing as well as the beginning of It would have been nice to hear more about yeah. that stuff. But, like, yeah, we didn't see that. We just saw hyping up Mazepin to the point where I was like, part of me was thinking like, hold on, did he finish like 14th or something? Like, like did he, he actually... last. He, yeah, he, he finished last. He's, he, he was unnapping himself from London <laughs> on dry tyres and he was like, literally like, flying around the place. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? <laughs> See, that's the thing. I think if the storyline was a bit different, 
it would have been a bit more interesting. That's why I, I wanted to see because there's so much footage of him and Mick Schumacher crashing on like, or pretty much they're gonna crash. Like, yeah. You could have used that footage literally. Like, there were some good quotes about them like going back and forth as well, but none of that was used as well. But we'll skip it because now we've got to the next episode now, part yeah. five, staying alive. This was another Ferrari McLaren episode, but mainly this, this Daniel Ricciardo. This one was boring. And they, this they was mainly about Monza. Daniel Ricciardo way too much. Yeah, this is so we've got like literally just another Daniel Ricciardo episode. This time we've got another montage in the first half an hour of him not doing well and all of this. Well, even though we've already seen that of him up to Monaco, and then we just the yeah the wins. hero storyline finally works. You know, like he goes yeah. and wins. Uh, to be fair, there were there were uh, there were a few interesting parts. Like, uh, what's his name playing ice hockey? Like, yeah, Zach know. Brown plays ice hockey. That, that actually threw me off. I had no yeah. idea. That was uh, weird. But but other than that, I think this episode is kind of one you just like forget, like just move. It on. was very. Forgettable. There was just there was just nothing there that we did not see on track, like Lando saying, "Ah, do you want me to stay here?" Or that's that's the like. But we already heard that radio. We yeah. already knew about that. Like this. It's just, I don't know. The episode like, is just a right episode. We'll just skip that episode, to be honest. There's just, it's just a right It's just Ferrari McLaren again, which we've already seen. And when I say Ferrari McLaren again, I mean Daniel Ricciardo and then a bit of the Ferrari boys to the side. It was just... It was just uh, Daniel Ricciardo was covered way too much this year. Considering he did badly. Like, if you know, if he struggled the first half of the season, then won... Then he just, the second half, he just outperformed Lando and, like, he went on to, like, finish on the podium a few times. I'd be like, yeah, cover that would, that's yeah. Been cool, you know? He won and he did just as badly after that, you know? It's like, <laughs> bad, then he did really well, then it's just bad again. Why are you covering, man? It's just boring, honestly. Yeah, there's not much to say on that. Interesting, a bit of a waste of an episode, really. Yeah. So, we'll get on to the next one. Which is the one we've mentioned at the start, a point to prove. I think this is the best episode. In best? This wow. I mean, I don't even know why I pick it's the best one. But this one is about Williams. We've got Spain again. More shots but, of Spain. But I think, I think the way they did it is really nice. They spoke about like the history of the team. They spoke also about, like what's your name? Claire Leaving Williams. The team. And then Jos Verstappen, they spoke a bit... Uh, not Jos Verstappen. Uh, Jos Capito. Yeah, they spoke a bit about his history and rallying and what he's kind of bringing The context the to him was nice. That was very nice. I think up to that point, the episode was really interesting because you've seen kind of how the team's changing, them bringing in Jensen Button. That wasn't mentioned, but you can it see was on st- uh, stage with uh, Jos Capito. Firing the engineers as well. Exactly. We that. that was interesting. So doing all of that and him kind of like being, we have to take risks to score points because obviously we don't have a good performing car and we're going to lay it out and try. And I think up to that point, it was incredibly interesting. And then there was the drama of George leaving and stuff that added kind of a bit into the team and the episode. Oh, and then, oh wait, no, yeah, they, they were building yeah, up the stakes for exactly. if George would leave, which they've... They've done before, but I guess it needs yeah, to be Yeah, but and then, because it's the last season of him kind of leaving, and then you've got kind of the the part where they, they I think George, was it, oh yeah, it was in Austria, where they kind of left George out, like they pitted him early, tried a weird oh, strategy. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was another race where he was overtaken by Sebastian at the end, and then the race, on, his fight was Alonso at the end of the Austrian one. And I think they build it up, and then they, the last part is like Hungary, where George is like, if you want me to kind of compromise my race, it's okay for Nikki and all of that. And I think the way they actually build up the episode is they don't actually use any kind of... It's not a rehash of stuff we've seen before. I think the episode is kind of brand new in that sense. Yeah. And they build up kind of like from the team changing hands, the history talking about kind of why Williams is a big deal. It's the second bit, like most crowned in like I think it's third actually I don't know why after, this is second but they, they, they second. must have been using a different after metric. what's his name after a Ferrari Forest. so it's either second or third but like big history talk about Frank Williams and then they build up and then they score points and I, I'd much rather if they mention that and then mention the kind of George getting a podium because yeah. he <laughs> got a podium like <laughs> uh, but I think they portrayed like their their struggle really well See, here's the thing. I feel like it was just a bit, like, it was good. So I liked the, the build up at the start, the intro to Yoscapito, a bit of like, just a couple clips of his character because he seems a bit 
I don't know, the Americans might like him because he's all bouncy and shouty and loud and stuff, but he, he came across as a bit annoying, to be honest, to me, in my opinion. Like, there was the one clip of George saying, oh, yeah, he's, he's upbeat, he's motivated, or whatever he said. German. Yeah. German, yeah. That's such, that's such a British way of describing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the sure. clip of him saying squeeze his balls. The thing about the rally driver, he's oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. so I told him, like, you sat next to the driver, yeah, squeeze his balls. Do it. Did you feel him? Right, tell him no. And then he was like, yeah. No. And then he tried to describe it afterwards like it was some psychological thing. You just got to distract them from what they're actually thinking. And it's like, mate, come on, man. Don't. No, but it's, just... it's, it's fun. It is interesting the way he, he's able to kind of manage the team and keep everyone motivated. I think they highlighted that as well. That's I liked the. Obviously, they'd shown a lot of Claire before. Yeah. So to show the switch was kind of. Yeah, it was quite good to see. But I, do, I just. I guess it, there's no, up until, I'd say, so, like, most of the episode, I'm spent thinking, like, okay, right, well, here we are, Hungary, he's going to get points, this is very clearly all building up to Hungary, so it would have been nice to see Spa. I feel like, it just, Hungary was shown well, and the race was shown well, but I think the bit that was, like, the one bit I really like about this episode was George afterwards. I wish they interviewed him for, like, Drive to Survive and not just took the clips of him, like, just yeah, interviewing yeah, yeah. the general media. But he was, like, in tears going around the media thing because, like, normally the drivers are just stood there, they say something dead and then walk off. But, like, he's fully, like, in tears, red eyes to multiple people going on about, like, oh, you know, I've seen the blood, sweat and tears that's gone into this and it's... uh it's meant so much to me, and I've seen I think the team we'll try, we'll and now we've finally got points. Like. Yeah, the end to, if that was the end to the episode, where they actually interviewed him, and that, that would have been, I think, yeah. capped it off really well. Definitely. I, I really would have liked to see that, just because he, he was so emotional. Like, it was all there for them to take it. And Literally, if they had done like that, and then Spa, which you think, like, hungry is the end, you know, the build-up, but then they got a podium after that, and then George kind of speaking about you know, scoring points why it meant to him and getting a podium with Williams. Yeah. I think that would have been perfect because, you know, like he spent three years at the team, struggling with the team, and then in one season he got points. He got a podium. He, <sighs> he, he out-qualified Lewis Hamilton in a Williams. Yeah, just... How? <laughs> How? He's not even, he's got P2, not even a, a barely a podium. He, he was, was so close to P1 as well. Exactly. I think he was like thousands off it. And yeah. it's just... Imagine, he could have won that race, if not for I mean, a stroke of luck. That could have been, like, statistically his first one. And he would have counted it as his first one. Oh, you're kind of, okay, no, yeah, you if, meant it. If, if I was thinking, it, I thought facts. you meant if you meant the race went ahead, I was like, hold no, on, no, 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 you meant if you got pole, yeah. yeah if you got then he would have, He was yeah. basically, he, he, was, he was just off pole, like, just <sighs> off pole. It's unfortunate. But, yeah, Thanks. it was, I don't know. I think it's it a very right, good episode. Fair. Especially compared, like, I compare it towards the rest. Oh, very, very yeah, I don't feel the rest. It's the best one, like... it's the best of these episodes. I say it's, so far, I'll say it's the best one we've covered so far, so we'll keep going and see if we I think, like, compared to season one, I think this season has been poor, to be honest. I have no memory. Of like I said, season I watched one, series half Season one season. was very interesting in the way they portrayed everything. Like, obviously, Lewis was d- destroying everyone at the time, but it was still kind of, it was brand new, so it wasn't the case of rehashing stuff. Yeah. The format of everything was new. And so it was interesting in that sense. I guess it is a bit of a PR thing. Like, people have mentioned now, like, Gunter Steiner, blah, 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 all of these, like, n- like looking good on Drive to Survive or doing good interviews on Drive to Survive is now a way for teams to... Big market up, like, themselves. Yeah, market themselves, essentially. So, yeah. So rather than being all raw and emotional and all of this, which would have actually been good marketing because you get more fans out of that, they're just kind of, it's almost becoming like in, like business interviews again. Mm-hmm. So like the best clips are always the ones where they forget the microphones are there and you get a clip of like Horner saying, shut up to like Toto on the TV or something, rather than like him going into the interview afterwards mm-hmm. and then being like, oh, you know, Toto is like, he's here for the money. I'm here for the pure love of racing. Yeah, Lord. It's like, <laughs> we know what you're trying to do. Like, like every time he has a... Every time he sees a microphone in front of his face, and now most of them are doing this, they're just kind of trying to manipulate the public perception of their teams, the other teams, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. It's part of F1, isn't it? It's <sighs> been a part of F1 as well, so. Yeah, I guess so. Right. Episode 7, Growing Pains. This is, like, I just, I don't know how they picked these two drivers. Like, they, they got Yuki, 
which is cool. I think and then Yuki's they got Ocon. And Ocon then they said no Yuki versus Ocon. France and Hungary is the races they chose to cover. See, see this is where, like, you kind of stop and you think, like, whoever chose the episodes and kind of wrote the script for the episodes has no clue what they're talking <laughs> about. Literally, like, you have so much footage and so much happened and you, like, compare Yuki to Ocon. They're not even in the same world, man. If you compare, like, what, like, if you're comparing Yuki to another kind of, uh, a new a rookie driver... And their struggles have been, yeah, fine for Yeah, enough. like Yuki and Mick, they both crashed a lot, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. Like, that might have even worked. But, but Ocon, man, he, he, you, like Will Buxton is like, oh, he's a junior driver. In what <laughs> world is a guy who's been in F1 for like three years a junior driver? Yeah, it's, he was in Force India before, no, he was in Aston Martin before they were racing point while they were Force India. Like, that's a long time ago. Just like I don't, Will Buxton actually annoyed me. Like, in this bro, episode. Will Buxton actually annoys me so much. I'm not. I'm gonna save the meme until the end. But Will Buxton, just in general, and like, because I've seen a lot of his tweets after Abu Dhabi, and like, he's he's a sport of Obviously, one. Like, yeah, he's, exactly, he can't say anything against. Him. That's what I mean. So he tries to like, I don't know. He's annoying because he markets himself as like a neutral journalist, but he's very clearly under also, like, the payroll, other, so the he another... can't say anything bad about them. The second journalist that was speaking the whole time, like, I've never seen her in my life. The blonde one? Yeah, I've never seen her in my life. They're like, they didn't want Will Buxton to be everywhere. So they're like, <laughs> let's just get someone new in, you know? Like, but they had, like, so many guys, like, would have been way more interesting to come in. Yeah, uh, to be fair, they have a big array of Sky Sports people, F1 people. Like, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't want Ted, but what's his name? Um, Karun. Oh, no, I don't like Karun. No, no, see, see but that would have no, been I don't want to see him talking, bro. I don't want to see Karun in China. He, he would have added, though, like, a different perspective to, to him. Yeah, so any anyone else That's talking. what I'm saying. Like, the if they get is, anyone in, like, if they got Nico Rosberg in, oh, yeah. that would have no, been yeah. so nice. Yeah, yeah. Because Nico, like, Nico or does Jimson not hold... himself, to be exactly. honest. Exactly. Nico does not, like, uh, the reason I like Nico is he doesn't hold back in the sense of what he thinks of the drivers. Yeah. Like when yeah. he knows Lewis is wrong, he just sour eyes as in. Yeah. And that would have added like such an interest because he knows Lewis very well. Mm. And he kinda understands because he's like a world champion, he also understands kinda what Max is going through against Lewis and stuff. He could have filled oh, the gap oh, in yeah. for Max by that's talking so about Oh my. No, yeah, that's such a good idea. Like yeah, yeah. Nico could have filled yeah, that kind oh of my. gap since Max isn't there. Nico could have spoke on his behalf what a struggle he is fighting against Lewis and going for your first championship and all of that in a big dream. He could have literally <laughs> filled in for Max. We could have yeah, we know we could have had a Nico Rosberg episode and just taken it back to like twenty fourteen and compared it to now. Or sixteen. But sixteen, sixteen. Yeah, sixteen would have been better coverage. But like I don't know. I feel like the the worst part probably is both of these two journalists were used, again, to just give context. So, like, you've got Will Buxton explaining qualifying and then the other one explaining tyres, explaining double yellows. Like, why don't you just ask them about their opinions or the general F1 opinions or the general Paddock's perspective on something? Because they can talk about what the fans think, what the Paddock thinks, the general rumours they hear, or just their personal opinions if you really think they hold enough weight. Mm. But instead, they're just... They're just stating the obvious, like... But they just need someone to fill in and explain stuff. So. <sighs> dramatic music in the background. <laughs> the funny thing is that whenever they used an article, they always got Planet F1, which is like... When I'm looking for F1 news, it's like the last <laughs> website I'm going to ever check for F1 news. It's not like a great website, is it? Uh-huh. And they use it all the time. I'm like, they paid them. Like, did they, like... They, oh, they I'll give you a tenner, yeah, but put my, <laughs> put my website up, yeah? I don't get that. Like, obviously, they don't want to put Sky Sports up. I understand Sky Sports and stuff like that. But you've got, like, Autosport, and you've got, like, way more reputable, like... They could have just used the F1 website. They used the F1 No, F1 website doesn't cover, like, like uh, rumours and stuff. Uh, I but but I, that's why I'm saying Autosport, for instance. Or something that is way more reputable. Not, not just don't go and use, like... Who, who <laughs> reads Planet F1, man? Like... <sighs> All these new Drive to Survive fans, man. They don't even check Planet F1 for the latest F1 news, bro. They're, bro, they're just not real It's fans. like, you know that YouTube uh, right. channel called, like, I don't remember what it's called, Drive or something. What? Drive something. Drive yeah. Tribe. No, no, no. Basically, the, he posts, like, news every day, like, rumors every day. How he finds rumors to post, like, pretty much every day, I, I don't know. 
It's, it's, but anyways, Yuki anyway, yeah, Ocon. So, sorry, Yuki and Ocon episode. Yeah, Ocon's a right off. They didn't cover his win at Hungary well enough, I don't think so. Yeah, they barely mentioned it, to be honest. Again, there was no real hype. Here's, <laughs> so Yuki and Milton Keynes. I think that funny was guy. Very, very nice. I think, interestingly, Yuki was definitely portrayed as like a child. Like, whether pe- that makes him likable or not in the eyes of the public, you know, he said, like, he had some good quotes, to be fair, in there when he said, like, what was it, uh, if I... And when I have workouts, especially in the morning, it ruins my whole day. That's funny. He <laughs> hates training. He's yawning in the engineer meetings. Like, <laughs> and, and the funny one was like, I, I want a massage. Wait, I need to go poo. And then he goes for a poo, comes out, he's like, that was a good poo. <laughs> Yeah, like he was. Why did that make it in? Like I don't get. Like that was the quality, thing. top quality behind yeah. the scenes. But to be fair, it was nice. It was. I it don't was know. It bo- added something, I guess. But I, I, I do see like, uh, in essence, like, uh, was it uh, what's his name? Franz Tost. Yeah. Yeah, he was talking about like how he has the potential and everything, but he doesn't have the motivation to go and actually do the work, and you can see that that he was kind of handed everything, and now he's struggling because. He's kind of left on his own. But at the same time, like, Will Buxton said one thing that I agree on, which is, like, even the people who live in Milton Keynes don't want to live there. Like, yeah. like, no one wants to live there. So imagine a guy moved from Japan there. He's like, That's what I mean. Like, it would have been a lot more... Because we got a lot of Franz Tost's opinion on it. And then a little bit of Christian Horner as well. And I liked the idea that these two are, like, these big giants watching over him, trying to mentor him. It was like Star Wars, weirdly. It felt like, you know, these two are like Yoda watching over I've him. I've never watched Star Wars. Okay, all right. That's really weird. Anyway, um, but it was like, it's it would have been nice to get his opinion on that mm. because we're just hearing that he is, you know, this like this kid who's been given everything and he's grown up and he's a spoiled child and all of this, and he's walking around, and then it, it cuts to him wandering around saying, "I need a poo," and he's yawning in meetings. Like, it would have been nice to hear what he actually has to say about his own work ethic because yeah. as much as he may not like training. He still has to do it. Yeah. And I'm sure he does it. Maybe he doesn't do it to the extent that he needs to. But, like, but there I think just wasn't enough in about Italy, that. It showed, I think, like, the, for the part in Milton Keynes, it showed that kind of he, like, from his room and everything, that he wasn't kind of taking care of himself. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why they kind of moved him and all of that. But I think, yeah, overall, they kind of portrayed him as a child. and Definitely. I'm not sure if that's kind of fair enough. Like, he's obviously still, like, I don't know. I think it's like he's a 19. He's 20 year. years. He's 20. Is he? He might have turned 21, but yeah. he's, he was 20 years. So, it's still, like, he's still young. Obviously, he just moved on his own and stuff. So, obviously, it's, it's a big change. A uh, big yeah. culture shock as well. Definitely. But, but, like, I like the comment of him, like, his radio messages on there. Like, he, he learned to speak English in the paddock with all the engineers and stuff. Yeah. So, obviously, he's going to yeah. be very intense on the radio and stuff. I like that part. That was kinda, a fair point, yeah. It, it did explain, give context to kind of why he's always kind of swearing and stuff on the radio. But, um, again, that's just like a Will Buxton theory. Like, yeah. it makes sense, but it was just like a throwaway comment. So, yeah. it would have been nice to hear Yuki's opinion on yeah. his English. It's interesting, it's interesting how even, like, uh, what's his name? Matteo Bonotto, when he's speaking to Carlos Sainz, like, good job, mate. It's like, why does everyone <laughs> use, like, you know, English slang? Like, they all use it in the paddock. Even the yeah. non like, Italian guy speaking to Spanish guy, why are you calling him mate? Like, like I'm confused. It's like, funny to hear. You can tell when it feels a little bit, not forced, but, like, out of place. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's, I, think, I think it's because there are a lot of British people that start yeah. using that. But I, it's, oh, it's interesting. The funniest portrayal has to be, so we, we mentioned there's not a lot of Alonso. Mm. So... We get Ocon, and he's alongside his teammate, world champion, double world champion, Fernando Alonso, known to be one of the most talented drivers on the grid, highly regarded, incredible reputation. And just after he's introduced... Lord of the eyebrows. Lord, <laughs> sure. And just after he gets this big introduction, he's shown dancing about like this in goal, trying to get Ocon to shoot against him. And then it cuts to him again saying, yeah, I think I'm in the peak of my life right now. Like, it was the funniest clip. Of, I, it, I found it. So I died, bro. I rewatched that, like, three yeah, times. Right. Like, it's got, like, big world champion Fernando Alonso, experienced in the paddock, 40 years old. And he's just sat there. Them two are, like, playing in the garage, playing football. Like, uh, and, and then it cuts to their team principal, the new team principal of Alpine, saying, yeah, we're not here to fall around. And these two are just, like, playing football in the garage, just, like, breaking tyres or whatever it is, like, just knocking stuff over. We didn't speak about well, what's his name getting a tattoo from Monza. Oh, yeah, Zach Brown. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing else to say. But they didn't speak... They spoke a little bit about Cyril getting... Yeah. 
But I was a bit like. But then the guy. I felt really weird. He was yeah, so evil. He, he was that's asking, who was it? It was evil. The team principal of Alpine, like he comes in, he sits down, snaps the thing, he's like, "Yeah, I'm the team principal of Alpine," and then they're like, "Yeah, last year was Cyril. What a, happened?" I didn't, I didn't know he was the team principal. Right, yeah, so I he comes in, snaps him. it, and and says, "I didn't know either. Yeah, I haven't exactly. seen." His I thought face it was someone else. Like I didn't think it was. No, like, he introduced himself. And no, he no, said no he I mean, as in from like previous footage. Oh of, like, right, yeah. The team no. and stuff. I thought it was someone else. I didn't think it was him. Oh, I knew Cyril was gone. Yeah, no, I had no idea who the team principal was either. Like you never see the guy. He's literally never there. And then he came in and he was like, oh, okay, so Cyril's gone. And he's but like, yeah, I'm not allowed to comment on it. Uh, Which no, was interesting. We should leave it in the past and move on. The the future, yeah. It was, I, I do get that, though. Like, he obviously don't want to speak about the guy you replaced. I understand that, but, but, it, but the problem is, because it's Drive to Survive and because it's like a continuity thing, Cyril was shown so much. And Cyril's and like he's there. he's crying. He's, he's, he's crying. crying. He's crazy. talking about how much he loves uh, Daniel. Talking about how left. much uh, Red Bull are horrible. And then you know, how much they need a new engine and all of this stuff, like the little back and forths. And then he disappears with no comment, like... It's, yeah. It's weird. It's just, I don't know, it's like a... As a drama series, it's not great character development. Anyway, we're actually so far into this episode, so we're Dances going. with the Wolf. Episode 8, it's George versus Valtteri. Once again, we've got more Williams. This one, again, because it's a lot of behind the scenes, it was yeah. quite good. So they went, the Imola crash... Then Silverstone, because there were rumours that he was going to be announced. Then and behind the scenes also of kind of uh, seeing kind of like when, um, you know, rumours came out that George was going to be announced and stuff. And then seeing like the Williams, uh, what's her name, PR person oh, saying yeah. that it was removed and stuff. And seeing how concerned George was. after That was so interesting because you seeing how concerned both of them were and how on edge both of them were. Am I staying? Am I leaving? And how intense yeah. it was that was very very interesting seeing kind of how Toto's going about making his decision a lot and then of Toto in that they episode. built up to kind of George with his podium out qualifying Lewis in Big the rain yeah. that kind of just like with Valtteri not being able to go for it I think that was amazing the way kind of they portrayed that and then you kind of get was, sorry, him, him, him announcing it to uh, to George and him speaking to Valtteri also about like no, oh, yeah. those two yeah. scenes were really nice where he was when he's behind the garage talking yeah. yeah and then when he invites Valtteri over and he sp- speaks to him so that that's was good very very interesting because you never get like access to stuff like that yeah. that's the stuff we want to see like that's why they're filming exactly that. that's why they get I don't want to see them. I don't want to see like on track stuff I can just google it and watch it I want to see these behind the scenes stuff that is kind of is actually ha- we know like George versus Valtteri was a big thing, like at the beginning they were like, ah, oh, who like what's his name, uh, people uh, in contention for the seat essentially. Oh yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then they showed like every young driver. Around, like, <laughs> had a, like, Literally every. What was half Ocon, of them had contracts? Yeah. What's Ocon doing in there? Like, Ocon's never like ahead of Valtteri <laughs> and George. Bro, you nuts, man. Like that's just annoying. Like like. Uh, yeah, I didn't get that. Too. No, but then just, then they did cut to George. They did a lot of George. They did a lot of. Valtteri. There was not a lot of Valtteri actually this time. To be it honest. was way more on kind of George's. Like this of... was the episode where you said there was uh, there was a bit of context on Sakir finally. Then there was him going around with his girlfriend. They had a little meal. The talk. It was about interesting though how after Sakir is talking about like the difference in people kind of recognizing him and all yeah. of that. It was weird. Like one race in a big team, you'd think the difference in terms of fame, obviously, like general but like in britain general recognition yeah. being higher because you were in a mercedes at the front of the group you would have thought most people exactly because also anyway. like it was so emotional so people would have kind of clocked onto it if he's just doing well people might not recognize him as much but i think it's because of the what happened at secure as well i think that kind of added to it yeah because everyone think, was speaking about it as well afterwards in my, terms of the media and stuff yeah, it's just my issue with this episode is because once again now for like the third time, we've got another narrative where it was already played last year, and I guess it has to come in again because this time it happened. So mm. like last time it was um, I don't know like has being poor, and then this year they've done has being poor again because continuity or whatever, and then they've got well, Red Bull versus Mercedes and Horner and his horrific unhealthy obsession, and like, cool yeah you're gonna need to show it again because this time he won but like. It's, it's there again in the build ups then and there's context and then there's it, it just feels like the same I think thing and then this the time it's copy and paste exactly like this time it was copy and paste again like oh 
George, young talent, you know, he's so young and he's so fast. And then Valtteri, he's so calm and collected and so consistent and he's so good. Like, I get that you need the to hype up that Valtteri it's... consistent. <laughs> so. I, I get that you need to hype up that it's an important decision to make. But you've already done this for like three years in a row. So yeah, just constantly, the... like, telling me in my head, oh, this is an important decision. And I guess the biggest problem is we all know the answer. Like, why are you hyping up to be this thing where in our heads we're meant to be going, oh my God, that's, it is such a tough decision. Don't, don't make it, don't give it the angle of, I wonder what he's going to do. Give it the angle of, this is going to be a tough conversation to have. Mm. Because either I tell this young kid that once again, we're going to tell him, nah, sorry, we don't want you. Or we're going to tell the driver that we've had for five years, who knows the team, who knows the engineers, who knows everyone, and who's been with Lewis and the rest of the team, throughout their periods of dominance, we're going to tell him, you haven't really done anything wrong, we just want someone better. Like, come at the the angle of the emotions rather than the anticipation for the decision. I think also, like, they could cover the fact that if they don't sign George, there is a very, very high likelihood that he would leave. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That wasn't mentioned at all. And, like, other teams, if you have the chance of signing George Russell, drop whoever you have and sign George (laughs) Russell. Like, Like, if you're at McLaren, obviously you'd really want him. Like, if I'm at McLaren, drop Daniel and get George and Lando. Okay, maybe yeah. that's a bit more like... Uh, but it's like, a tough decision, but it's still worth considering. Exactly. And the point is you would I'd negotiate say, with them. Exactly. And George would definitely approach them to negotiate. Because yeah. he's in Williams, he has nothing to lose. So I'd say, like, the teams that were kind of at the time would have a look at it. I don't think Ferrari would be have a look no. at it, to be honest. But I think Red Bull would have a look at it. Like, yeah. having him as, like, no, like... Like him and Verstappen in a team would be a, maybe a good idea. Obviously, they'd be George is a bit more relaxed. They're both quite uh, kind of relaxed, super competitive. But there is a conversation. No, yeah, yeah it's at least McLaren. Sports. I think is probably the best fit for him. Um, and then you've got like other teams in the midfield that he could have a look at. Like you know, if Aston Martin, like he could have had literally like the conversation of him moving from Williams to Aston Martin you moving up the yeah, grid right. you know moving say to the Mercedes we want to keep Valtteri for just the next year uh, if I'm George I would have stayed to be honest at Williams for that year sure but the thing is go to Aston Martin. if you're George and Mercedes have told you no you're in the bottom team in the grid maybe like there's opportunity to be ahead of uh, Haas and Alfa Romeo because they were but that leaves so many options. Exactly. And you lose nothing by trying to negotiate with all of them because you have a great track record. Exactly. And you have the proof of secure and all the rest of it. Like, it would have been interesting to have a different angle rather than constantly the copy and paste of this important. It's so this, it, this decision yeah. is so important. I wonder what's going to happen. Don't make us wonder what's going to happen. All of your fans have watched this season. You've made them a Formula One fans. Why are you introducing your new Formula One fans? Like, you did the job you were supposed to do. You made them Formula One fans. And now you're babying them again from the beginning, saying, oh, you know, I wonder what he's going to do, like, as if they haven't watched the season. Those people cheering for George and Silverstone, most of them would have seen him through Drive to Survive. Exactly. Why do you think they bought those tickets? Like, they're there for him because they saw him on Drive to Survive. And now you're acting like they haven't, you know, they weren't watching. I think one thing, one thing is they, the way they treat Drive to Survive is as if you haven't watched the season. Yeah, but exactly. most people ha- know what happened. They know who won. They know what. They know all the big stories. So, it makes it very boring to watch because you already know what's gonna happen. And everyone does because exactly. before it was just the I old think, fans. But now, yeah. like, I think if won. they look at it from a different angle, that's what you're saying. It'll make it more interesting because then it's not about what's gonna happen, but rather the other side of it. I think yeah. that's why I actually since the beginning of Drive to Survive, I've hated Drive to Survive from season one. Not because of the impact it has in F one or anything, but. I already know what's going to happen. What's yeah. the point? Yeah. Like season one to season four now, there are very few episodes that if I sat down and watched, I'd be like, like the Williams one, perhaps the Yuki one, you know, like perhaps the George Valtteri one. Like if I sat down and watched those, I'd be like, you know, this is interesting. Yeah. The rest of them, I'd be like, I already know what's happening and it's not really adding anything. Yeah. It's just boring. Like, so That's the thing. Like the unique situation we're in now is like we're saying just beforehand, it was just the old fans saying, yeah. I hate Drive to Survive, or it just tells me what I already know. And I have but now it's the new fans. Like, they, yeah, realistically, once this comes out and everyone's finished it, they should agree as well, because we're all coming at it from the same angle now, needing more new stuff. Yeah. So I don't know, it'll be interesting to see. I might chat to some new fans, see what they're saying about it, see what they think. All yeah. the, the new fans I know did not find it very interesting. 
Okay, that is worth noting. Right, well, now we're on to the last two episodes. Interestingly, uh, I think you can speak about them as kind of one. Yeah, we'll do it as one. Basically, big media people got access to the first eight episodes early, but they didn't get these two, interestingly. And these are the worst, like, they're not <laughs> interesting at all. Like, well, these This two... is exactly what we're talking about. You know, like, you know what's going to happen. These two episodes do not add anything to watching, like, the Qatar, the Saudi, and the Abu Dhabi. Countries. Yeah, so they, they add nothing. Nine and ten called Gloves Are Off and Hard Racing. They cover Qatar, Jeddah, and Abu Dhabi. Uh, Abu Dhabi saved as the last one. And yeah, it's, oh, it's boring. It's, <laughs> I think you, you can tell Max's absence, like it does make a very big difference. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think that's why I'm saying if you got Nico in or someone who kind of represents that kind of adversary to Lewis, you know, someone who's had that experience of fighting against Lewis and all of that. That's why I think he'd fill in well for Max. But obviously yeah. he'd speak as kind of like a pundit or like whatever, not as obviously Max, but yeah, not even someone from his corner, but explaining kind of what Max is going through. That would have been way, even if they got Jos Verstappen to speak. Oh, yeah. Or if they got yeah. Helmut Marco, or got someone Just other than Christian Horner to speak about what he's going through. Yeah. It would have been so interesting instead of just, just this. Like, there's so much Horner already. And then exactly. to make it a 2v1, because Lewis, as much as he doesn't talk that much, he's still in it, and he still does the odd, like, you we have clips of him and we hear yeah. him. So to hear his voice in the little interviews and stuff, and then just to cut to Horner trying to clap back or say whatever his opinion is, it's just like we've now got the team principal and the driver's opinion versus just the team principal, and you can tell it's just a bit of an imbalance. Uh, it's interesting seeing yeah. like behind the scenes in the engineer rooms where Lewis that is looking really at the footage and like our double waved yellow flags, all of this. That but it's was, just I like that. that's literally like that. one minute of like the whole. I know episode. it's so annoying because the thing is like, I understand coming at it from a new fan's perspective. Everyone's already heard of Lewis. Well. Like this is season four, but like. In general, like, okay, from the beginning, a new fan's perspective, whether you're American or whoever you are, you've heard of Lewis Hamilton. Yeah. So yeah. to learn more about newest Lewis Hamilton, I don't know, it, it, I guess it doesn't really do justice to the other 19 because, we, we, like, if you've heard his name before, and you're not, it's not going to make already you, know him. Yeah, so you're not going to be more inclined to watch F1 because you get more background on Lewis Hamilton. You're not really going to care as much. But if you learn that these other 19 drivers are actually interesting people worth knowing about, then it kind of makes it more interesting because Lewis has done enough for his name already. But if you get these other 19 and give them a platform to express themselves, then it's quite interesting. Now we've come to this point where everyone knows all of these drivers. Like all of these Drive to Survive fans, they've now contributed to F1 social following, the driver's social following, they're buying merch, they're fans. They know about Lando and Quadrant and all the things he does and then all the other driver's ventures outside of F1, whatever it is. Like the point I'm making is like, you know all about all of them as much as you do why not now shed light on lewis like he's the biggest star in the entire sport and like he doesn't really do that much media anyway so if he's giving you the courtesy of like these interviews and stuff dig into him a bit further like maybe he i don't know he might have not let them fully go into detail on his life but like to go into the angle of how he's f1's first like like superstar essentially like actual celebrity then it would have been interesting because, the, you know, the guy goes to, like, um, all these big social... Like, he was sat next to Zendaya in, like, Paris Fashion Week or whatever it was, like, literally a couple of weeks ago. Like, no other driver is doing that. Yeah. So to get shots of him going around the world and doing all of these things and then going into F1 and destroying the competition, it just... And his opinion on that, it would have been really interesting yeah. to see. It would have been a new angle, at least. Like, at the very yeah. least, it's a new angle. But I think... With the last two episodes, I think the first episode wasn't that interesting. Like the Qatar uh, Saudi thing was just, no, yeah, it was, was boring. It was just very boring. I don't, I don't think that like, it was just watch, the race. If you watch the races, it would be fine. Yeah, in like, terms of the last the race, races. Abu Dhabi did not require its own race. To be honest, I think the way they covered it, though, like what was interesting is they got all the drivers pretty much saying, "Oh, this is unfair them unlapping like." I think it kind of showed the FIA in a bad light, him breaking the, the rules, Michael Massey and stuff. Almost. Not in a very bad way, but in a bad light. Not it to the extent it was, but it was negative, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like all the drivers saying this is unfair and like even like people speaking like or narrating saying that, ah, uh, you're supposed to unlap everyone. And, but but I don't think it did, it did justice to the fact that 
Yeah, Max was the only beneficiary. Yeah, so that was the quote that was given, which is cool. And all of the other drivers... But it doesn't also, highlight exactly but like, how bad it is. Yeah, the, like, you're right. It, it was negative. But it was, like, negative here. And the extent to which it happened was, like... Re- I'm not even talking, like, exaggeration, dramatising. I'm talking the reality. The rule was broke... Like, the either the rule was broken in two places or two different rules were broken. I think the rule was broken in two places. But either way, like... So the rule was broken in two places... These are things that have never happened before. And it was all made for the drama of the last lap because they're manufacturing it, blah, 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 blah. Stefano, uh, what was his name? Stefano. Uh, oh, my God. Dominic Dominic Carly. Carly. He's yeah. like, oh, we just have to put on a show and stuff. And he's the head of F1. And then when you actually hear that and you see Michael Massey and stuff and what he did and him unnapping half the teams, it fits in exactly with what he wanted. He didn't want yeah. Mercedes to win anymore. He You're didn't want that the, uh, uh, domination. And it fits ex- perfectly in with Michael Massey letting those five cars unlap themselves. Yeah. because Literally, it yeah, fits it's, exactly with what he's saying. It's, it's perfect. They, they is, manufactured yeah. that win. And because... It's, it's disgusting. A, yeah, so what you're referencing is like, right at the start of the episode, they, you know, they go up to him and they're like, so, who do you think is winning? And you know, I was like, oh, I don't know. I've been, fl- I don't know. Uh, Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton, uh. and then Stefano Domenico, the owner of F one, just comes in and he goes, the political answer is Formula One, and then you know we're going on about how they're level on points and this is going to be incredible. And then they come in and obviously you get the brand new champion. You have your last lap drama. It's it is the perfect situation. You no, know, he said at the beginning as well of Drive to Survive that you know Mercedes have been dominating for so long, oh, okay. and we need to like. It needs to change, or the sport is going to be affected. He said this at the oh, beginning of the, well. uh, of the season. That stuff. Yeah, that's why I'm saying it fits exactly. This stuff he said for Drive to Survive fits exactly with Michael Massey. Just it fits exactly with him, like all the new rules, regulations targeting the Mercedes, which yeah. is okay. And then it fits exactly with Michael Massey breaking the rules for Max Verstappen. When you see all of this together, you're like. Yeah, it was just it was just made because they didn't want Lewis to win again. Yeah, it's. I don't even know to be honest. It's it makes it's, you not want to watch F one to be honest. That's like when you see all of this, it doesn't make you want to watch F one. It's annoying. Yeah, it's really off putting to be honest. Like I, I've still. I don't know personally. It still kind of puts me off. Like I'm kind of obviously I'm gonna watch the races and I've, it's interesting stuff. But just knowing all this stuff mm-hmm. is happening in the background and it's. It's so shamelessly happening in front of us as well. Like, before, if it's hidden away, you can't... You don't forgive it, but, like, you almost... You know it's happening, and you're like, okay, well, I'm aware of it. It's it's not this obvious. But, oh, my God. Like, the fact they know they can do this now in front of our faces and get away with it is actually horrible. And the fact Lewis is still... Like, every time I see Lewis, I just feel bad for him. Like, it's... They're just sat there, like, rubbing it in his face, and he's got, like... No one's even just admitting that it was, like... I don't it's think they can get like the backlash they got after it though, was it was like quite intense, so I don't think as well especially with the having to let Michael Massey go and having to change the system and all of this, I don't think it will happen or at least I don't hope I don't think as well it won't it won't happen again this badly. Uh, I guess. But I think last year was just like Michael Massey was just unqualified for the role. It, what was interesting was the clips where uh, what's his name is speaking Lewis is speaking to Toto and he's like. Baco, uh, Baco just haunts me, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, something See, like. this is what we wanted, like, if it's, Baco was such a good thing to speak about, how Lewis dropped the ball, and for the first time in, like, what, five, six years, Lewis actually dropped the ball, like, as in, yeah, it's his the fault. The win was there, and he It was it. his fault, yeah. like, it's nothing else, like, if he'd won Baco, he would have probably, at the end, won the championship. It's yeah, just we're that doing. Win. Hindsight stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, but it's I'm saying, like, like, imagine that that one win right, yeah. could have led him to a championship. But, yeah. It's tough. I guess, once again, this episode was, you know, Abu Dhabi, big race. Who's I don't get Abu Dhabi was also, like, like, it was a boring race in general to me. Like, they... It doesn't I, require it just, an episode. It, it just followed the race again. So, I get it. Like, the races are interesting. Saudi, a lot of stuff happened, a lot of drama. They didn't cover Saudi that well as well. And then uh, Abu Dhabi, same thing, a lot of drama, Perez defending, blah, 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 all of this. Interesting. But there's a difference between interesting race and interesting Drive to Survive episode. Exactly. Like, you can't just copy and paste the race into the episode, add some dramatic music, a couple pauses, and then, like, Will Buxton quotes, and then say, okay, cool, that's it. 
Like that's not how it works. If it's an interesting race, show us the key points, maybe a bit of context, remind us what happened. And then once it's over, skip over and get some interviews afterwards. Like after Abu Dhabi and the championship was won, there's very little left in the episode. There's probably five minutes. We already know who's going to win. Why are you trying to hype it up? And then when we get the five minutes, it's just Toto with a couple menacing threatens about oh, winning we're next come year. Back a better. And then um, a Horner going, like, there wasn't even that much on Horner celebrating. He's been waiting years for this moment, and you're not even going to let him celebrate it properly. Like, as much as it would have pissed me off and rubbed me, like, just annoyed me seeing him going on about it, even though they, like, didn't even win it fairly. For no fault of their own, obviously, blah, blah. But that there's nothing there. Like, where's him running back to his family and celebrating with his kids and going, oh, look, Max Verstappen's a world champion and then going on about it for the next four years. Like, nothing. They only just got him getting that helmet from, uh, what's his name, Max Verstappen. I know. It was was just, they didn't do it justice. I think they spent way too much time on stuff they shouldn't. Like, I think if they did a review of the race or, you know, follow along the race, then Saudi deserved this on episode, not Abu Dhabi. Yeah, like, I'm and saying they shouldn't they do it, but I'm lot. saying if you're going to do it, that's the episode you do it. Like, that's the race you do it. I mean, they did a bit of that as well, to be fair. But it like, wasn't there enough, was, like, a... There was just a lot of shots of, you know, there was the brake test, which wasn't even covered properly, really, to be fair. But you're not really going to cover that, are you? Then there was a lot of, you know, Max going off the track. To be honest, I feel like Max spent more time off the track in Drive to Survive than on it. Like, every three episodes, I was like, oh, Max Verstappen, he's overtaking him off the track. Will he get the place back? And then they switch and all of this. Like, it was... I don't know. Overall, eh. Poor. I'd say, like, season one is probably a bit better, to be honest. I, like, yeah, not that I remember season one. Much, yeah, not that I remember. It wasn't, it wasn't that interesting. Eh, we'll see what they do next year. Hopefully so, they actually do something interesting. We're setting up our own anyway. fantasy uh, league. For next season so we're yes. going to put the code in the comments below uh, for you guys uh, to join because to join. Bahrain is in seven days we're actually yeah. filming we've decided to come into the library at, it was meant to be nine at 10 a.m. on a Sunday to film this yeah it's pure dedication I know right? so yeah we've made our I've made my fantasy team I'm probably gonna change it you will make your fantasy team soon I will leave the code in the comments and then uh, be sure to join in. Make sure it's made actually before. I think the cutoff point is qualifying. So you can actually watch practice and then change your che- team based on that. But like before qualifying starts, or probably an hour before qualifying starts, make sure you've made your team. Because if you miss out, they'll probably, like the average person will probably get like 150 points, maybe even 200 points. So if you miss out one race, you're already 200 points behind. So if you want to join, make sure you join. Uh, and then you can have a look because everyone's teams are public. So once you join the code, uh, once you join the league, you can click on my team, see what it is, see Yusuf's as well. And then I guess we're just going to do some yeah, quick predictions for Bahrain. Uh, I don't know why uh, I said it like start. that, Bahrain. You say it, you start. I'm starting. You start. <sighs> I already know who I'm going You know already? Yeah. Okay. Well, as we all know, last season was... Uh, okay, I can go. Um, I'm going to start. No, George wait, Lewis you. Max. Oh my! George for qualifying or the race? Um, uh, both. Both. Yeah. Because Mercedes were like, "Oh, we have so much trouble with the car," uh, and they always say that, and then they go on to get a one-two. So I- I'm going with that. Max, MV. Yeah. That's, and then again for the yeah. That's, okay. Well, I thought we might have ended up picking the same thing. We're definitely not picking the same thing. And driver of the day is obviously uh, George Russell. Cause because he won. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Basically, we don't really have much to go off. Yeah, we're doing this, w- like, as I've said on Sunday, this is well like, With the fantasy, you can kind of look at practice and kind of formulate what's happening. With this, is just like, both of us are going to be way off, so... I, I don't yeah, know we know absolutely. So I'm going with a safe bet. I, I, I think Mercedes and Red Bull, like, I think they tried so hard to change the rules and everything, but I think they're just going to be the two best teams. I'm going, oh, bro, Paul, Charles Leclerc. Mm, bro, you made George Russell, don't do this. Uh, oh, oh, don't, Lewis Hamilton, George Russell. And then the race. Uh, will it that, oh, will it be close? Will it be, no, Charles Leclerc, Charles Leclerc. Lewis doesn't normally do well at the start of the season. Uh, Max will finish P10, yeah. 
And that's that's a joke, from... okay? Like I joked last time about Lewis not being able to drive. <laughs> Some of is being serious. <sighs> <laughs> I come kind on, of come on. Uh, do I put you no you know top three for the race Charles Lewis who's the I, I really want to back Carlos but I always do this I always say Carlos I'm going to go George I always say Carlos but he never actually does it it will be Charles Charles Leclerc I will back Charles Leclerc he will do it yeah alright we'll see we'll, so we'll I guess we'll film next week Probably we'll film next week the first race review of the season yeah man it's been so long but it's it's almost gone quickly yeah like We've somehow been doing, like, on average, probably an episode a week until... We've probably only missed two weeks. Yeah. For the Dedication. entire winter break. And that's it. The winter break is over. Finally. Uh, I'm excited for the new season. Like, the cars this year actually look different. Like, uh, to compared to previous years where the cars all look the same, they all pre- pretty much drove the same. This year is interesting because, like, Mercedes went with one extreme... Ferrari are basically the exact opposite, like the end of the spectrum. You get Red Bull with a totally different design. Everyone has a totally different design. It would be very interesting to see kind of... Obviously, this is just a start. Yeah. So you can obviously extract way more from your own concept. So it would be interesting to see kind of... It's kind of like with the low rake, high rake, kind of with the previous generation. But this one is way bigger. And it's yeah. also interesting to see how they deal with them. Yeah. Well then. Yeah, I guess we'll see. We'll uh, see you guys next week.